I feel a couple raindrops. We can hang out here as long as we want to let the storm pass. Is this your traditional backpacking trip? No, some of you might say I'm not backpacking at all. Hey everybody, Syntax77 here with my good friend Denali hiding back there just uh, right behind my head there. And let me tell you what's going on. We are right now in northern Vermont, I guess what you would call the north country of Vermont. I'm about 30 to 40 minutes west of Montpelier, which is the capital of Vermont, and I'm about to do a section of the Long Trail. Now the Long Trail is a, you may have guessed it, even if you're not that familiar, a long distance trail. This one in particular runs the entire length of Vermont, it's 273 miles. We're not going to be doing that big of a section today. Once we get out of the Jeep here, I got my pack next to me. We're just gonna do, Denali and I, just a single night, two day backpacking trip, less than 10 miles today. We'll get into all the details once we get on the trail. But right now I'm just kind of getting situated. I guess I'll turn the vehicle off. Got my pack next to me here, right there. It's my trusty Osprey 48 liter pack. Uh, if you're a gear nerd and you want to know all the details, I'll put a link down in the video description below and I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit as we go. But my main objective right now is just to get situated, get my boots on. And the trailhead is actually right back here behind me on the other side of the road here. And uh, we're gonna go on up and check things out. Show you a little taste of Northern Vermont today. All right, buddy, come on. Over here, I see a white blaze. We are on, or at, I should say, the Appalachian Gap. There's a gap on each side with the road. The area in between, from what I've read, is pretty nice and scenic. That's why we're here. So there's Lincoln Gap, which we're headed towards, and then Appalachian Gap right here, which we are parked at and leaving. So right here, we can actually see Lincoln Gap will be 11.6 miles, but what we're gonna do is more like three miles, and then we're gonna get to a really cool spot for views. I'll talk about it when we get there, or maybe a little bit as we go. I might ditch some of my stuff and set up camp there, and then we're gonna maybe, actually definitely, is unless things go really horribly askew weather-wise, uh, we'll go to Mount Ellen, which is ahead of us here. Uh, about midway in between these two gaps that I keep talking about. I also see a cooler there. Looks like some uh, trail magic probably for uh, through hikers. They do that on the Appalachian Trail. Like I said, we're not on that right now. We're on the northern part of the Long Trail, but uh, perhaps somebody set up a nice cooler. I'm not gonna take anything because I don't think that would be fair. I am not through hiking, but I'm just kind of curious. What's somebody left here? Oh wow, a bunch of ice and sodas. That's really cool. So that's just a little example of the trail magic that goes on around here. I'll seal that back up and leave that for somebody who's actually putting in the full 273 miles. <laughs> Nolly and I are fresh on the trail. We're gonna be just fine. We'll leave that soda for somebody else a little more deserving. All right, this is a little more like it. We're gaining some elevation, going up some Craggy rocks. Definitely feels like Vermont. Ooh, it looks like we already have maybe a register here. So we're actually in Camel's Hump State Forest. Camel's Hump is a prominent peak around here. We're not going to get quite that far. I believe that's beyond the second gap. Uh, or it might be actually north of Appalachian Gap, which is back at the parking lot. So we're not going to see that. We'll see some other stuff. That's cool. Theft and vandalism. Oh, I don't want to really read about that right after leaving my uh, Jeep down there, but it's bound to happen sometime. But people often ask, I haven't had any problems yet with vandalism or theft on the trail. I guess, you know, you just play the odds, but I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. All right, <laughs> I'm walking away, but I should sign this thing. All right, date. Well, that's a good point. It is 829. It's the very last week of August. 
And our anticipated temperature range is like low 80s to low 60s at night, maybe mid 60s. Destination, Starks. All right, let's do it. We'll put a check mark on there when we leave. Rocks are a little wet here and there, so I gotta keep cognizant of that. But not too bad. Now, there is a threat of thunderstorms in the forecast. It's only 30% for the area, but also a forecast of potentially 20 plus miles per hour winds. Not the end of the world, but not exactly a peaceful summer day either. That could uh, make things interesting. But we'll see. So far they're nice and sunny. What do we got here? It's Panorama and Theron Dean Shelter. Over and up there apparently. And Long Trail South Direct Route. I suppose that's us. All right, let's go. <sighs> Keep that up. Help going. All right, looks like an opening. We've racked on about 1,700 feet of elevation gain so far in these last few miles. Oh, out of nowhere. That is the roof to some sort of structure. And you can see ski lift over here. So I think we are now at the Stark's Nest. Let's check it out, Nolly. This is a little bigger than the other one, that's for sure. I'm not sure if anybody's in there, so don't go surprising anybody. Nolly. Here's the rain barrel. So this collects rain from what I read. It seems to make sense. Through that gutter up there off the roof. And uh, hopefully there's something in there because there's no real streams around here. So, oh yeah, it's full. So I have a water filter with me that I will use to treat that water just to be extra safe, of course. And here we are, Stark's Nest. Now this is private property or privately owned, if you will, but they do make it available to the public. It's obviously part of this <laughs> ski resort here. The last single chair ski lift in the country. Take a look at that. So we're gonna camp somewhere around here. Like I said, we're not gonna do it in the building. Who knows? Maybe there's nobody up here and Nolly and I could stay here. If the weather got bad enough, I would do that. We do still have a threat of thunderstorms for the rest of today. Tomorrow looks pretty good. It is a Wednesday. I did a Wednesday and a Thursday just to keep the crowds down a little bit and it seems to be working so far. We're just gonna poke around and find somewhere to camp. So it's like uh, 2.30. Not bad. I mean, I guess since we're right here, we might as well take a look inside, right? Wow, look at this. Let's close this. Somebody's broken beer bottle. I don't know what that's all about, but okay. And uh, heater, that would be, again, probably for the skiing months when you can kind of chill here in between ski runs. But you can stay here. And there's a composting outhouse, apparently. Nice. This is pretty cool. I mean, maybe we'll chill in here and just like eat and hang out. But I am going to definitely set up camp. But this is a cool option. We even got a clock right there. And it looks like probably a fireplace, um, again, during the winter months. Stark's Nest is a property of Mad River Glen Cooperative. You are welcome to use and enjoy it, but please respect the building and its surroundings. Pack in, pack out. Very cool. This is pretty neat, huh, Nelly? It's like we got the whole mountain to ourselves and our own little, our own little restaurant, if you will. All right, neat. All right, let's go find camp. So weird to say that <laughs> after touching a doorknob, but that's what we're gonna do. Because don't be fooled, we are still relatively in the middle of nowhere. It's pretty cool. All right, let's see what we can find. Walk down here past the chairlift. Somewhere with a view, hopefully. Let's see what we can do. It probably falls off pretty steeply over here. I just have to imagine. Although, I don't know. I bet you there's some shelves down in there that we could probably set up camp. Those clouds are moving too. 
All right, well, let's get set up while we can, shall we? And, and, and actually, yep, that is rain. So I'm just gonna set up really quick. So the hut was just around the corner up there. There's the chairlift. There's a pillar for it right in front of us there. And uh, here I am over here. Raindrops are coming down, so I'm gonna set up camp really quick. Now, I should point something out. For those of you that follow the channel, this may come as a bit of a surprise. It's been years since I've done this, especially outside of the realm of just being forced to do it because of terrain, mostly out west and flat desert areas. I brought a tent because I wanted to be able to just pop up on like kind of a meadowy area, just like we have right here, and Nolly and I can stay together. It's about twice as heavy and bulky for sure as my normal hammock setup, but uh, it's just something different. I want to switch it up. Maybe we can talk about it later, but right now I'm going to get it set up. It's just a two-person Kelty Salita tent. Uh, I got the body right there. I got the poles over there, and I think I'm just going to put it up right in this area here with a view out beyond the chairs, kind of unconventional, right? And onto the mountains. So let's see what I can do before I get rained on here. And uh, if I'm quick enough, then at least Nolly and I will have somewhere to hang out together. All right, there we go. Wasn't the most <laughs> beautiful or necessarily level setup I've ever done in my life. Not only has it been a long time since I set up a tent, but uh, well, this rain is threatening, and I've got another cloud coming over, so it seems like it might open up again. But there it is, my Kelty Salita to, uh, tent. The first one I ever bought for my very first backpacking trip many, many years ago in the White Mountains. Then I switched to hammocks, and uh, then I was getting ready to come up here, and just because of the expected terrain and everything, and here comes that rain, I better hurry up on my talking. Just because of the expected terrain and everything, I was kind of just wondering what to do. As you can see, I got really thin trees around here behind me, and there's really no way I would see off of this ridge back here behind me if I didn't do the tent realistically. So my wife was like, why don't you just bring a tent for the two of you, especially if you're bringing a dog? And I said, you know what? I'm gonna switch it up and do it. So that's what I did. Now, normally, if I am gonna sleep on the ground, like in a desert or something, that's my uh, Thermarest z Light pad. It's folded in half now for Nolly. Which, speaking of Nolly, that's going to be his. Now, I have a cheap Walmart one that I showed in my budget backpacking video. You can check that out. But it tends to want to curl up and roll up because it's a rollable pad. This one lies flat, so I figured it'll just be easier for Denali tonight in case he gets up and wanders and moves around. It'll keep its flatness. For me, I got the Big Agnes Q-Core SL summer version, so it's not really that insulated, but that'll be fine. The low's only going to be in the 60s tonight. And that is my wife's primarily. It's about three inches thick. She likes to carry the extra weight. That is about a half pound more than the foam pad. But hey, since Nolly was using the foam pad, I figured I'd just bring that. So I'm gonna throw both of those in the tent. I got my um, Gregory Optic bag over there. I think I'm gonna grab that and the food bag that I have in there because this rain is definitely picking up. And I think we're gonna retreat up here and maybe wait this rain out. Why not? Up in the shelter. I might make some mid-afternoon ramen. It's uh, around three something right now. And uh, yeah, I think I'll just make a little ramen noodles. I have two stoves to test out that viewers sent me. So we're going to check those out uh, in just a minute when I cook lunch. Come on, buddy. All right, let's see what we get out of this rain barrel here. Now the system I have with me is it's just my Catadyne Bee Free, the body of it at least. And normally that's in a little 0.6 liter bag, which is fine for just me, fits right in your pocket. But since I'm out here with the dog, figured might as well have a little more capacity available. So I got the two liter, wide mouth, same threading, uh, bag by Hydropack. It's the Hydropack Seeker. You can get a three liter version of this as well. And uh, let's just see if this hose works. It's working. So I'll fill this up and then squeeze out of this and fill up my water bottles. Now, of course, I could always drink directly out of it too if I wanted to. If I was feeling particularly impatient, but in my case, I'm not dying yet. Thank you, Rain Barrel. 
All right, so I have to be honest. <laughs> I did not, when I set out on my eight hour drive, seven hour drive to get to Vermont, did not envision myself sitting in an office chair today. In fact, ironically, I packed in a one and a half pound camp chair that I'm definitely gonna be able to use by my tent, but <laughs> right now I definitely don't need it. But I figured there's no wind in here and I wanna test some stoves out. Hopefully this echo isn't too bad. Let me show you what I got out of my little cook kit here. I got my 450 ml cup, titanium cup. Inside, I have two stoves from two separate viewers. I did a mail call video recently where I opened up some mail. I had no idea these were coming. And I had two people on the same episode of mail call send me packages with basically modified cat can stoves. I've used fancy feast stoves before. I've showed those on the channel. It's just basically this bottom part, a little 25 cent can of cat food with some holes punched in it. But these versions, this one here is from Keith in Georgia, and he took the Fancy Feast can, put an aluminum inner liner in there, just some aluminum flashing it looks like, and then some fiberglass insulation on the outside to act as a wick. This one is from Nick, AKA Triple Nickel on YouTube. And thank you, Nick, as well. He sent me this one, and this version is one I've read about before where you cut down a tomato can punch some air holes in the top, slip that down inside the Fancy Feast cat can, and there's a wick in there as well. In his case, it's carbon felt, also known as a plumber's pad. It's like a burn resistant felt, basically. I'm just gonna go with Keith's first because that's the one I opened first. Uh, I do need my alcohol, let's get that. There we go, and for both of these stoves, you pour in the middle, and it's not completely sealed inside there, so it draws into that outer wick and the flame just comes out the sides of that wick in kind of a really tight pattern, which in my testing, I just boiled some water at home, worked really well with my 450 ml cup. Now, what remains to be seen is whether or not I can get a whole thing of ramen in there or not, but we'll find out. So add a little bit of fuel, an ounce should be plenty, and I believe at least one of the guys said, give it a minute to soak up in there. While that's sitting, bust up my ramen. I'm gonna put my busted up pieces in the cup, add water and heat it. Got my ultralight lid, super expensive and fancy, otherwise known as a piece of tin foil. That'll go right over top. Some water, just enough really to cook them. I don't need a whole ton of broth, I just wanna eat some noodles, just cause I know I'm hungry and I didn't snack too much. And let's see how this works. Carefully with my striker, that's lit. Now it is coming out the middle right now, but once I put the top on, at least with this model, there's no air holes, so it's gonna force all the flames to come out just the side. And in my test at home, um, it did boil faster and with a little bit less fuel. Now I haven't tested enough to scientifically give an exact time and amount of fuel used, but just from what I could tell after years of using alcohol stoves, it was quicker and got the job done with less fuel. So I think for the extra little bit of weight, a regular cat can stove is only like a quarter ounce, this guy is, uh, I'll pop it on the screen after I weigh it. So it's not terribly heavier, and if it ends up making you more efficient with fuel, then that tiny bit of extra weight for the stove could end up paying for itself. Plus it's just cool and convenient, right? So I'm gonna let that go, and from what I've also seen, if I get done cooking and it's still burning, um, it's not that hard for me to just blow this out. Next thing you know, we'll have some noodles, hopefully. Oh, all right, so. And it's only been about three minutes and we're already getting a little boil over, so I'm gonna take the lid off, put a little seasoning in. It doesn't take much to cook ramen, that's for sure. I think I'm gonna blow it out and just save that fuel because I can put the lid on and let it sit for like two more minutes at the most and these noodles are done. There we go. Have to admit, I am impressed with this new stove so far. I'm liking it. I will eat outside too. Of course, as soon as I come back out here, I do feel a couple raindrops, some dark clouds around, but there's also some really bright sun. Kind of a mixed vibe out here right now. It's really bright and mixed with rain. Heck of a view though. And I got some nice noodles. Ah, it soaked up pretty much all the water. So it's like side dish style instead of soup. That worked really well though. That is quite good. Nice little pre-dinner meal, if you will, to replace calories. Soak this sun up while I can. And if we have to retreat back into the 
Stark's Nest here, then we will. The tent down the hill is not terribly far away and it's nice and zipped up. Sorry about the wind. So it should be staying dry during all this. I got our sleeping pads and our sleeping bags already down there. Other than that, all of our stuff for the most part is up here. So we can hang out here as long as we want to let the storm pass. Um, is this uh, your traditional backpacking trip? Mm, no, some of you might say I'm not backpacking at all, but I'm enjoying this jacket. It's like I got a cabin all to myself that I never even knew was available to me. Very nice. So it's going to do this and then we'll camp down on the hill there. And it should be an awesome view out that tent in the morning. Tomorrow's weather looks clear. At least it was. I got a little weather band radio with me that my wife gave me for my birthday. Kicking it old school. Uh, so I can always check that later too. And uh, get a little old school weather report. I know it seems crazy, but you can get weather without an app. Works pretty well. Woo! That is hot, but tasty. Better let that cool down. <sighs> but anyway, I'm just going to enjoy this. Now he's got some food and his water over there. <laughs> He just plunked his head down on the ground. We're just going to soak up the views. Just take the afternoon wherever it may take us. At this point, it is, believe it or not, 7.30 p.m. We rode out the storm. We never got a chance to see Mount Ellen. I should say we probably had a chance, but we kind of decided going there in the rain, not so much so. So what I think the plan will be is go early morning. Coming out when it's 100% perfect weather is awesome, but a lot of times the best kind of views of nature happens during the transitions and that's what we're getting today. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Denali. You both slept well. <clears throat> Hopefully you can hear me. Boy, I feel like I don't have a voice yet either. Sorry. It's about um, 6.30. Just kind of pinned down by rain still. Um, I'll have to see if I can get another forecast. I thought we were going to be clear by now in the morning, but I could have been wrong about that. I actually have my alarm set for 5.45 because right out of the tent here, I was gonna hope to catch sunrise, but uh, we've just been completely socked in by rain most of the night and morning here. So just gonna wait it out and see when this stops. And then hopefully we'll still have time to go uh, down the trail a little ways, do a little excursion to Mount Ellen possibly. Uh, we both still have to drive home today and it is about a seven hour drive. So we don't wanna get off the mountain too late. But we'll see. But anyway, switching back to the tent, not bad at all. Now, when I was in Utah, I was testing some gear with uh, Outdoor Vitals. I slept in a tent. So it's not the first time I've slept in a tent in a long time, but definitely the first time I've actually gone out on a solo backpacking trip and uh, went with the tent. But it feels pretty good. My pad's good. Nolly's comfortable. He's got, he's nestled into, here you go, buddy. <laughs> he's disappeared now. He's nestled into his sleeping bag from my friend Pim in the Netherlands that made that for him. It's two separate pieces that clip together with baffles on it. Um, so you can use it just as a pad for him or like a mat or you can just use one side if it's warmer. In my case, yeah, it's just kind of cool like I said in the 60s. So I just went ahead and um, I have the two pieces separate. He's just been kind of nuzzling into them and getting comfortable. And all I have is my 40 degree hammock gear top quilt. I'm feeling good. So, yeah, I'm gonna relax a little bit longer. Got my fancy pillowcase, AKA my spare t-shirt wrapped around my <laughs> Outdoor Vitals little inflatable pillow. These things are great. It's got a little one-way valve. I've been liking it. So it packs down really quick, but it's kind of a large opening. So it's real quick to inflate at night. about it about two breaths really maybe a half breath for depending how firm I want it 
My big Agnes here is great, but it has the normal thin valve and it's not a one-way valve, so you have to sit there with like your tongue on it or holding your breath. Uh, and it took probably about a <laughs> hundred breaths to get full, not three. But I'll tell you what, this thing's pretty robust. Once it gets blown up, it feels pretty good. I'm pretty comfy right now, which is why I'm not in a super hurry to get up and get wet, but I will if I have to. But I think I'd rather just lay here a little bit and see what happens. What's it look like? <laughs> Doesn't look like much. At least it stopped raining. This is a small tent, but it still has the vestibule area, so I was able to keep the boots under there and there's my little chair if I'm ever able to get it back out again. My Mayfly all light chair tucked back in there under the awning. The vestibule, whatever you call it. And there's our view for today. So it's a good thing we saw what we could yesterday at least. Most of the rain was primarily before 7 a.m. At this point it's like 740. Huh? It's a little chilly, huh? Would you be more comfortable up in the hut? Maybe have a cup of coffee and you'll have some dog food. Ooh, might have to put my pant legs back on. Oh, almost forgot my cup. Would have been bad. Not the end of the world. But, I don't need walking up and down this hill any more than I need to. Come on now. Well, here we go. The rain has pretty much stopped. The fog still continues to hang. Hopefully that'll burn off. And uh, right down the trail here, we're coming to a split. Nolly thinks he knows where to go, but you're wrong, buddy. Up there would be Stark Mountain Trail and the base of Mad River, I believe. That would be a lot of downhill, it sounds like. So we don't want to do that. We're actually going to continue on the long trail. Split off here, south. Easier for you than me, buddy. <laughs> Welcome to the Green Mountain National Forest. For the next 54 miles, the Long Trail passes through National Forest, where the trail is maintained by Green Mountain Club and U.S. Forest Service. Very cool. What do you think about that, Nolly? Yeah, you don't mind? You're good with that? Still pretty foggy. It's getting brighter, but then again, that's because we're further into the day. It is 11.09. Uh, to be honest, that means we've been hiking for an hour and change. Keep in mind, or I'm trying to keep in mind, that I have to go back and break down my tent, pack it up, and then from there, at the hut, do three miles downhill and hopefully not too treacherous downhill. My main concern is this little guy over here. Um, I know he's ready to do it, but I don't want him to get too overzealous on those uh, ladder sections. But it's about where we are, so I'm going to go a little further. I mean, looking at the map, I don't know how much more it opens up. Uh, I think I'm just kind of missing out on some views because of the fog. But I want to find somewhere to sit down, have some breakfast, <laughs> even though it's 11. It'll be brunch. Uh, try out this new stove and kind of refuel, re-energize, and then basically back out the same way we came. We turned around even right now, we would pack up, one o'clock leave, and then hike down, seven hour drive. Yeah, these are things I have to think about, but focus on the beautiful surroundings and a little breakfast, brunch, whatever you want to call it. Feels kind of weird. Came out of the forest right there. Opens up. 
onto basically a forest road, it looks like. <sighs> I don't know. This might be as good a place as any to get a view if it's possible. Let's go up here. Come on. Oh, it's another ski lift. The theme of this trip, apparently. Let's see what we got. Yeah, not much of a view all the way around me. <laughs> the wind is whipping through here good. It'll be a good test for my next stove. Probably not fair. Sorry, I used Keith's stove inside of a uh, cabin with no wind. We're gonna use Nick's stove out here in the elements. But, hey, that's all right. I'm a little hungry, I'm ready for some eggs. Suppose, <laughs> suppose here is as good a place as any to uh, cook my brunch or whatever it is. So I'm kind of tucked behind the wall here, right there. There's a aptly placed cinder block, and uh, I got my stove on there, right behind the uh, ski lift station here. And uh, let's uh, get some scrambled eggs, ham and peppers going. We got Nick's stove which very similar but it does have that carbon felt and from what i can tell it does kind of soak up the fuel pretty well i see now that he actually put some holes inside to draw the fuel outside of this inner ring tomato can into the uh felt got my water right here one cup of water real simple for these scrambled egg meals you put it in a cup of water it's more water than you need, but it will rehydrate it. And then afterwards, you just kind of open it a tiny bit and we'll drain off the water. And we got scrambled eggs, ham, peppers. Can't see it. It's burning. Whoa, burning so hot that there's not even really a, even a blue visible flame. There is a decent amount of wind. So this is kind of a tough test because not only is there wind, but I don't have a wind screen. So it's not really fair, but if it works, that's definitely a, uh, a testament to this stove. And we just want to get this water up to barely a boil. I'll use my water bottle there as a wind block. Seems to be helping a little bit. There you go. Now I got a windscreen. It's cranking along pretty good. I feel a couple of raindrops, but that's okay. Uh, it's 11.51 right now. So my time back to the vehicle might be a little delayed considering that I'm up here a couple miles away from base camp and three miles to go after that. But... Let's just relax and focus on the scrambled eggs for right now. Come on up, buddy. Nolly, he's uh, drinking my egg water, apparently. <laughs> An added benefit to this meal. Your dog gets to uh, get some extra protein and morale, I guess. All right, well, you enjoy that. So here we are, uh, beautiful, but the fog has not lifted, but that's okay. One little complication, I, uh, I don't know where my trusty long-handled Sea to Summit spork is, which is perfect for getting down into these rehydrated or dehydrated meals. My assumption is it's either buried way at the bottom of my pack over there, or <laughs> it's a few miles away back in my tent that I still have to break down. But that's okay because I always carry in my first aid kit, which I always keep on me, a spare fast food spoon. So I'm good to go. It's not as convenient. I don't have to dip down in there a little more, but I will eat. So pro tip of the day, carry a spare fast food spoon just in case you either leave yours on the trail or you're like me and uh you don't know where it is and you're lazy mm. oh man it's cold out here right now it's like high 50s low 60s i meant to bring a long sleeve shirt i did not i got a brand new one from rei before i came up here on clearance for like 20 bucks i love it, it has a hood and everything it's very light but uh yeah i left it at home I got some warm food and to be honest after i eat this it's probably gonna get moving it's very foggy very cold and i feel like i mean the weather forecast said i was good for the rest of the day but i don't know it seems like it might rain again just a gut instinct <laughs> 
Popoc, les poulaillers modernes urbains. Alors, nous sommes en entrevue avec Anaïs Radé. Anaïs, tu es encore avec nous? All right, well, it does appear to be the parking area, and that does appear to be my Jeep right over there. So at this point, I would say mission complete. Overall, had a good time, soaked in the woods and mountains of Vermont, little tiny section of the Vermont Long Trail. It's been an awesome time and awesome views, eh, you know, depending on how you look at it. I'm a little off kilter on timing, but that's okay. I'm super hungry. I'm gonna take care of that in a minute. Till next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now, it's cheeseburger time.